Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. <clears throat> yes, I see a hand. Uh, yeah, Darlene had the operation on her eyes. The eyes. And Nancy, did she have an operation? Parma Man. You mean a, a like a nursing home? Really? Okay. She's there for her health and recovery there. Or is she there for good? No, I don't know. Oh, they don't know. All right. We will pray for these two before we get started, and then we'll get started. Father, I pray that you would uh, heal uh, Darlene in her uh, eyes, that the operation will be successful, was successful, and that her re eye uh, would be restored so that she would not lose her sight. We think of Nancy and her anxiety that you would snatch that away for, for her, Father. <clears throat> and that the uh, experience, <coughs> excuse me, at Parma Manor would be, uh, uh, would be helpful for her, Father. That the, you would uh, help the, uh, uh, those that are attending to her there to be an encouragement to her. Father, and those that visit her now. In Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. All right, I ask you to turn to uh, Exodus chapter 8, and then, uh, I don't know, as I was doing this, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about the rapture uh, at the end here. Uh, where does judgment begin? At the house of the Lord. Now, why? Now, that is, that is in Peter. It's 1 Peter 4, 17. Now, this morning, I opened it up and I read the context of that. And uh, why is that? Is when the reapers come, and, and there's in and, and the context that it is, it may not be what I'm saying. But when the reapers come, where in the church, what is it, what kind of two things are in the church? Tares. Oh, tares and wheat. And then in, in Matthew 13, when you read of the gathering of that, when they come together, what is gathered first? Tares. The tares, you're right, the tares are gathered first. They're not reserved for some other later gathering. You know, these gatherings and raptures and all that, you know, to get them all in sequential order or the right order, when the reaper comes, he gathers the, t it says gathering the tares first. It does state that. So could that be that judgment begins at the house of the Lord first because there's tares in there and they got to be gotten out, out of the church and then the wheat is gathered and placed in the barn. So sometimes, you know, we say these general terms, not necessarily knowing all the sequential things. Now, I, I said that, and uh, I'd like to, to think that that is factual, that that's actually going to happen. Now, now I, I said that for a reason, though, too, because of what is going on in our country and what has been going on in the church, this is kind of a preface before we get started. What's going on in the church also is a, with our country, and this is a document, is the document is the, uh, the Constitution. The liberals want to make it a living, breathing document, meaning that you can change what it, 
we have to update it, uh, suited for millennials or whatever. They want to update this thing. And it's got a, the Bill of Rights needs to be uh, changed. Instead of the Bill of Rights, uh, they want it to be the Bill of, uh, boy, what's that? They say the Bill of something else. That uh, the Bill of Rights is to say these are all the negatives. And the Bill of whatever they want, well, what about the positives? the opposite side of that. Uh, now, when we first got saved and we got in the, into the Mennonite church, uh, it would give the, uh, uh, the qualifications for an elder. And the qualifications for an elder, what gender was the elder? Man. Was a man. Now, I, I just want to tell you where these people are coming from. Folks, this isn't just at Berkeley or up at Portland or Seattle where these weirdos are. Well, Gary, don't you understand? Now, remember, I had just gotten saved. I didn't know a lot of Bible. I didn't know Bible. <clears throat> they said, uh, the pastor said, well, you see, it gives, it gives all the qualifications for a man. But see, the Bible isn't clear on the qualifications for the woman. And I'm thinking, now, this is how these people think. It gives the qualifications only for the man. But it doesn't give a qualifications for the elder if, she's, if it's a woman. And on and on it goes. It, it just, it's one thing after another. I, I said, I, I, I then found the verse. I said, it's, it says here in the Bible, it says that she shall not usurp authority over a man. And you know what his res response to me was? Can you guess what the response was? That's your interpretation. Nope. He said, well, she didn't, they, they, were they, they had already selected an elder that was going to be a woman because she could minister to the women in the church. Oh, no, oh, well, she didn't usurp the authority. I gave it to her. I mean, my mind was just having short circuits here. I went from the from the fire uh, from the fry pan right into the fire, and so then I had uh, I said I I said the Bible says that a woman is to be a keeper at home. His response I, I'm not pulling the leg. Here. His response to me, well, Gary, do you believe? in slavery that was his response I, I didn't know what to say I didn't I didn't know what it stated in the law I didn't know anything about slavery in the Bible are there slaves in the Bible I didn't know what it said are there slaves in the Bible yeah or no up or down yes are there slaves in the Bible all the way to the end all the way into Revelation, all the way to the end. Well, Gary, are you are you supportive of slavery? So the argument, here's the argument. The argument is Paul, he he would support slavery in the Bible. Paul supported slavery. You could read verses where Paul supported that. Because if he did support it, the Romans wouldn't listen because they had slaves. It's a, and he would say it's a cultural thing. And so uh, eventually that was going to, Paul would then eventually preach against it and against the Romans and we, we need to end slavery and, and the Romans wouldn't have it anymore. And if, and if he just came out, out against slavery, well, they, they wouldn't listen to the gospel. This, this is... Then, there, then there's, no, there's no cut and dry, true or false, in the Bible. You make this up on the fly. And then the same could be true then with the Bible. Well, that's a cultural thing. See, it's not just the King James. There's all kinds. Everything becomes that. So then what becomes true and false? Is it just the resurrection, the crucifixion, the virgin birth, three... Uh, you know, you got your five majors, and that's it. That's what's cut and, cut and dry. 
everything is, is uh, up, up for a vote. I say this, that that man is Satan's minister. That's what I say. It would make me angry. They're Satan's minister because if, if you recognized him as Satan's minister with a pitchfork and horns, you would, you would be able to point him out. That's what's run in these churches, folks. And it has goofed up the congregations all across this country and worldwide. It is just getting it ripe for the harvest. Ripe for the harvest. What is legal for slavery? What is illegal for slavery? You cannot do what to a man? It's the S word. Anybody know? Uh, no. Steal. You're not, I'm pretty sure in the law it says you can't steal a man. So they would steal people. Those are the guilty party. Those that steal a man. It's against the law. You cannot do that. A man can sell himself into slavery. All right? There's nothing wrong with slavery as long as it's the Bible way. I mean, it's just, it, it just because, why not it is, there's such an ignorance of what the Bible says that it's just open up because they want to make this a living breed, just like the, uh, 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 the, the Constitution. Now, folks, that's a man-made document. This is God-made. This is a God-made document. And it needs to be obeyed. We are getting close to the edge here with the end days of what's going on. Exodus 8, I thought I'd preface it with that so you could be on the lookout for these snakes. And they are everywhere. They're everywhere. You darken the door of some of these churches, man, you think you walked into a den of thieves, man. Uh, I, I talked to a guy that said he, uh, uh, in fact, we prayed for him. He said, they asked me two questions when I walked into a church. Uh, what kind of a car I drive and what's my occupation? He said, wherever he goes, that's the two questions they ask him. What kind of a car do I drive and what's his occupation? Just utter nonsense, man. When it uh, starts. Exodus 8, verses 22 and 23. I'll just read two excerpts from them. We have, we have about 50 verses, and we will go to it. That we, You've already heard the introduction, and you heard how we will end. As if judgment begins at the house of the Lord, it is going to harvest the tears out of it. Tears are going to go. You know, we would used to say after the rapture, well, the church will go on because the tears are left. We say those kind of things, maybe not knowing the Bible. Now, if you go to Matthew 13, I really do believe, says the reapers, the first thing they do is they, they gather the tares first and then the wheat. So this, this idea of when, when and how these harvests are, are made, I mean, it's just more than one. See, the world generally thinks of a general harvest. Uh, in other words, they're partly right. There's going to be a harvest. They know there's a judgment. But they don't have all the facts down in, and in an order. But there is a fear out there that there is going to be some kind of a judgment and a general harvest when all this is going to end. And, it, you know, the, the predicting of the end of the world. Father, bless now the preaching. I pray that it would be edifying and it would be uh, encouraging to all of our people, Father, to know that you are protecting us and that we live in the land of Goshen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Verses 22 and 23, And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. As I said, I will preach on just two of the excerpts out of that. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. 
between God's people and Satan's people, the land of Goshen. Neither it is a place, it's neither heaven nor hell. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not up there and it's not down there, but a land between the two, this land here, which is between the two. A place where the people of God dwell. A place where those that dwell may enjoy the blessings of God, the security of God, and the assurance of God. That's not to say that we don't enter the kingdom through much tribulation that the Bible says, Acts 14. When it came time to venture out into the wilderness of this world, it is said a mixed multitude went up with them. A mixed multitude went up. It is very similar to the church, for the church is mixed with both wheat and tares, in which both may enjoy the blessings of the church. They grow together <clears throat> until there be the final severing at the time of harvest, when the tares are gathered first to be bundled and burned, then the gathering of the wheat to be stored in the barn. The first are cast into hell, the latter to be carried to heaven. It is also called thy field. That's what it's called, thy field, as if it were the field of Boaz, where Ruth found herself gleaning, a separate field out of the entire field, which is the world. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap, that means by chance, was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who's a type of Jesus, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. The field is the world, and there is a portion of the field, a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. Boaz is Christ, and the part of the field which belongs unto Boaz is Goshen, a type of the church. So I could preach all three as being one in the same. The portion of the field which belongs unto Boaz brings with it many things. Acceptance where there is neither Jew nor Greek. That is to get in neither Jew nor Greek. They all come in under the blood of Jesus. And God doesn't segregate any out there all equal. That's the only time men and women are ever equal. A place in which we never have to venture into another field. A place in which we cannot be touched and become defiled, where that wicked one touches us, not the church. A church, a place where, <clears throat> where we gather the gleanings, the blessings of the Lord, and not only the gleanings, but by the handfuls, as it says, that Ruth gathered by the handfuls. And one day, all of our efforts will be completely recompensed by recompensing our work by means of a full reward. And that's what it says in Ruth 2.12. I mean, all these things line up with the New, uh, New Testament. Full reward given us by the Lord God of Israel. Look to yourselves, as it says in, in, in uh, 2 John, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Those that enter the church that is the land of Goshen, the part of the field which belongs to Boaz are those that be in Christ and have become a new creature, where old things are passed away and where all things have become new. Amen. As did Ruth, the Moabitess, who left father and mother in the land of her nativity <clears throat> and came unto a people which she knew not. <clears throat> when we had gotten saved, when we got in the church, I mean, it, everything became new. It was new for us. The church is the place where one finds the God of all comfort. As Ruth says to Boaz, thou hast comforted me. Who is it that comforts and grants salvation? That by the name of Jesus Christ, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Ruth showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. 
And who makes the arrangements? These arrangements of one of these three lands was Joseph. Behold, they are in the land of Goshen. Joseph makes the arrangement, a type of Christ. Joseph, a type of Christ. Goshen, again, a type of the church. And what was said to Pharaoh as to how long the children of God will live in the land? For to sojourn, this is what it states, for to sojourn in the land are we come. To sojourn there for a short time. As sojourners, we're just passing through. We are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Sojourning our time here in fear, the word of God says. Forsaken? Have you been forsaken? Blessed are they whom the world forsakes, because Christ loves them. You and I have been forsaken by the world, but Jesus loves us. Amen. Those that dwelt in Goshen were an abomination to the Egyptians. Those called Christian today are treated as evil and cast out your name as evil, as it says, said to the church, he calls us friends, I have called you friends. He befriends us, but we are evil according to the world. Said to Ruth, this is what was said to Ruth, Thou hast spoke, or Ruth said to, to, to Boaz, Thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. Those that lived in Goshen are the kinsmen of Joseph. Those that lived in Goshen are the kinsmen of Joseph. Those associated with Naomi and Ruth, Boaz, the man is near of kin unto us, one, one of our next kinsmen. Those, those with, with Boaz were next of kin. Those in the church, when we are in the church, we are near kinsmen, are called, when we are saved, become the sons of God. In all three lands, we are kin to Jesus. Who owns this world? The devil. For he is called the prince of this world. But the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has purchased the world. And as owner, he has carved out a land of refuge. He, but he owns lock, stock, and barrel. And he has carved out a little bit of land here, a land of refuge for his own. You and I. The land of Goshen, the field of Boaz, <coughs> the church of Christ, all one of the same place, amen. As show, showed the devil, the devil showed unto Christ all the kingdoms of the world. Doesn't it state that? At one time he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Yet there's two kingdoms he could not show Christ. My kingdom is not of this world, the coming kingdom. He couldn't show Christ that. That's Christ's physical kingdom. And the other one that he could not show. And the kingdom of God, which is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, which is spiritual. The devil could show Jesus that either because that's what dwells in our heart. This is where the, where the kingdom is, like where the church is, where we are the church. The kingdom in the heart made up of believers in Christ, which is the church. Ah, the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, the Bible says. He looks upon his own with gladness in his heart. Not only will he defend us, but by his nature, he will love us. Folks, I, 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 today I'm trying to encourage you and I, that if you're in Christ, we are in the land of Goshen, folks. We're in the land of Goshen. All this COVID, what's going to happen at the election? What's going to happen to, you know, you can't get coins. They'll probably outlaw money. The, they're, they're going to make it a whole lot rougher. But folks, we are harbored in the land of Goshen. Amen. 
Christ died for us. The righteous for the unrighteous. Jesus the righteous for us, the unrighteous. Making us righteous. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains, the Bible says. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Unmovable. And a mountain for all to see. Our Lord's eyes are always upon his church, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Always upon the land of Goshen, the field of Boaz, and the church of Christ. In earth, <clears throat> in earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that what the Bible says? In earth as it is in heaven. In the great prayer, the heavens shall declare his righteousness. Right, so shouldn't we do the same thing? If they're doing it up there, the heavens declare his righteousness, we need to declare his righteousness. Did Moses to Pharaoh from Goshen, did he do that? Declare God's, he would go into Pharaoh and declare God's righteousness. Tomorrow, you're going to have flies. The next day, you're going to have lice. And you're going to have frogs. You're going to have... You're going to have the mirroring and all. He declared God's righteousness. And don't we let our sh a light shine before men like on a mountaintop. His righteousness is like a mountain. And peace separated from the, from the plague sent from God, which hounded Pharaoh and his subject, subjects. Peace separated from the plagues sent from God, which hounded Pharaoh and his subjects. As Ruth found rest, <coughs> excuse me, as Ruth found rest for her soul when she lay at the feet of Boaz in the threshing floor. That which attacks the church as did the winds and the waves and Christ rebukes such with the words, peace be still. Who will not permit us to be tested he will not permit us to be tested beyond that we are able to bear. And he always makes for us a way of escape. Amen. We can count on these promises. You may say, well, why? He owns all of it and he's carved out one piece. But it wasn't originally like that. One land, one sea. One place is how God originally planned it all. And God said, Genesis 1-9, let the waters under heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. But when sin entered the world, that which God intended became defiled. <clears throat> and the whole earth was of one language and one speech dwelling in one place, the land of Shinar. And then the Lord scattered them abroad. And those which find Goshen, the field of Boaz, the church, your final resting place, will find the world will take note of you, that you had been with Jesus. And we bought a car, and I drove the Coupin, the sedan in. And on the back it says, Jesus saves. You may say, well, why do you even have that car? Well, I don't know. But I parked it so everybody that drove in there read that. Those outside the church think you strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. They think you're a weirdo. Or of the trials the Egyptians laid upon the Israelites who dwelt in the land of Goshen. Think it not strange concerning, you know, when they laid trials on them, well, the same is going to happen to us, right? When they were, when they were uh, in the land of Goshen. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. He makes it, makes it that way for us. We, we won't fall. Makes it that way for us. So when we see him, we are all the more joyful. Christ is our hiding 
place. Thou art my hiding place, the Bible says. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe, the Bible says. You know, anytime I may have conflict, or I, I think there's, man, I need to say something. I get in a line of them people, those wackos. And then I, and I mention Jesus, I'll mention that man. These older black women pull those masks down and they say, Amen! <laughs> Don't we all dwell in the same land? The same field? The same Christ? Don't we all dwell there? So why do some think evil against one another? Which is too bad. In the land of Goshen, we should not think evil of one another. In, in the land of Goshen, at, at the field of Boaz, or in the church, all three are the same. So why do some think evil against one another? Joseph's brethren thought evil against him. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Because Joseph was a type of Jesus. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. For they thought Joseph will per, per adventure hate us. And will certainly requite us of all the evil which we did unto him. But for now... Children of God, we dwell in the field of Boaz, in the church, in the land of Goshen. So let us make the best of it. Outside of this, it is bad. Real bad. You know, all the uh, differences. You know, I, I made a judgment about my, one of my ex-preachers. I, I say he's working for Satan. Am I the ultimate judge? I am not the ultimate judge. Let God be the judge. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? At the least, first as it says, let the reapers gather together first the tares. So why sit ye in judgment? Let him who judges exercise righteous judgment. Be thankful and enjoy for now the land of Goshen. Be thankful and enjoy for now the land of Goshen. Folks, we're in the church. We're in the land of Goshen. We are in the field of Boaz. It's neither heaven. It's neither hell. It is here. And if you're in Christ, you're there. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Best regards in Christ, your pastor. Shake hands before leaving.